I would like to remind all of ourselves to take a moment and cultivate the altruistic motivation seeking complete enlightenment for the sake of liberating infinite, kind, mother sentient beings. With that kind of bodhicitta motivation or bodhisattva's attitude that we should all participate in this teaching. <laughs> I think it is very important for each of us uh, to ask this question to ourselves. Why are we uh, participating in uh, uh, spirituality? What is the reason behind or what's the purpose of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, participating in uh, uh, Dharma? Mm. So if we find uh, in a real good answer, if you will, to this particular question, why am I participating in Dharma? Uh, then once we really see the reasons clearly for ourselves, I think that would make a difference uh, in, uh, uh, you know, uh, in uh, practicing Dharma. As we face uh, difficulties, we would be uh, able to cope better uh, with the difficulties. So uh, if we look around ourselves uh, with everybody uh, who is in uh, our uh, neighborhood or the city we live in, uh, we uh, find uh, a lot of uh, you know, differences uh, uh, in our uh, life situations. 
uh, the fact of the matter is that we are all human beings. That being said, uh, that there are many people, I think they are able to uh, have uh, the kind of resources uh, they seek to make their life comfortable and uh, you know happy. So they're very successful in doing that, and their life seems to be going very smoothly, you know. And almost everything they wish for is coming, uh, you know, becoming a reality, uh, so to speak. But then there are others uh, in the same neighborhood or the city that, uh, despite the greatest efforts they make uh, to get what they want, but they're always, uh, you know, facing uh, many more difficulties and uh, they lack uh, resources that, that they are seeking. So we do see such differences among ourselves. Uh, you know, uh, uh, living in, uh, in, in in the same uh, uh, neighborhood or city. Then, Tronsig and Nalata Nimada and Buchalgers, and it teen on it up in a Pamakik Nin, Sumbi Pugu in a social miss, message it on the any Dunga Yungit, Devok Nanishi, as you get a mandate, you wish child to attend the tongue doors. Now, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, we do find difference in terms of. Uh, you know, how should I say, um, you know, finding comforts and happiness in life or running into more difficulties and problems. You see, not only, uh, you know, between ourselves who are living in the same, uh, dwelling in the same city or the neighborhood, but within one family, you know, family members or the children who belong to the same parents, you know, as they grow up, they seem to have different uh, life experiences, you know. Uh, things are working quite well for some. Life is kind of a nice and smooth and cool, but for others, it's a struggle. It is uh, painful, you know, and such differences do exist, and we observe them. So now we really want to explore, you know, so what contributes to, what are the conditions and, if you will, causes uh, uh, which, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, you know, produce, uh, if you will, these differences. That the sin dela ne kani je ata tende ke thone, ji tende ke sin di ne shaya ke zangi thone ta yungu mandu was. So making uh, great efforts in this life is everything. It leads to success. Well, then that's obviously not, you know, seems to be uh, the right answer because everybody making the same efforts do not seem to get the same results. It's in this life we know that maybe a lot of the people are putting the same efforts, but they do get different outcomes. Uh, uh, so one of the things often people seem to tell each other is, you know what, you've got to find a good job, you know. So when you find a good job, then you really need to stick to that job, you know, just work hard at it. And then you will be, you know, you'll have success in life, right? You're going to get the money, and then when you have money, you can do almost anything you want. Okay, so it seems like the money is the solution to uh, all the things. Uh, uh, and But the fact of the matter is, it doesn't really necessarily seem to be the true, you know. Uh, money is not answered to a lot of the things or to everything. That thing, but the, yeah, you can see that sometimes two men in degrees, me, but that is not true. Because you can't let's say, but you can't say, but you can't say, but you can't say, but I don't think we really necessarily have to explore deep down the reasons for all of these things, but I kind of, if we make a sort of a cursory observations, if you will, around ourselves, uh, some people seem to have a very kind of an easy life, as we must say. They don't seem to be working hard, you know, at least this is what we see. But they could have a nice house, you know, they have a nice car, they have everything they want. And other people are struggling so hard and uh, paying the bills, and still life is a struggle, you see. <laughs> 
ધાના દેશ દેતે મેવશે અને સાયા થું ચોવખી હોય છા ને દેખ વતને મંગુ દોસરા થું દોસ And I'm sure you know about these things you know more than I do you observe these things at you know uh uh out there so to speak that you know some people really they are working 16 hours but still they're short of money you know and they can't afford to buy a house you know and uh, you know they have to really cut down on the expenses and try to you know eat simple food and kind of a, you know uh basically trying to survive despite putting 16 hours of work every day and say the money is not really much there that the chabad sindhi thole kali ja chiyu gare mundo as so the point i'm trying to make is you know it really the success that we talk about in this life is not everything to do with what we do here and now you know putting a lot of efforts into whatever we need to do or working really hard you know uh, or killing ourselves over our job as we might say If that is the real cause of success then everybody who is doing that killing themselves over the job should have a success but that's not a success story we have dai chabad kang dil jo is na ta sosu le satap ta le lete ho ho ris so the real cause i think is uh, really beyond just simply working hard or putting a lot of efforts in one's job or whatever things one need to do but the real thing is really it has to do with uh, one's uh, karmic actions you know the positive karmic actions that one have accumulated i think are the real uh, causes of uh, uh, success tal the le to se le zambu tang ba ni ores le zang ni ta bu ores so uh, you know when we talk about uh, le or karma or karmic actions uh, basically we can talk about the good karmas or the positive karmas and the bad karmas or the negative karmas tal le ગુપ્યોજિતાની ટ્યુટલાંગ્રીકેજોય ટ્યુબોન સુજિબેટી accumulating wealth or resources as i must say is because uh, you know they practice what we call generosity or dan in sanskrit chinva in tibetan so as a result of their generous heart and mind a uh, generosity that they are able to have resources uh, uh, in this life that jimbe lonche te tol ta se tele nasa dundi te mar ne nasa de mo ma po yong ko er kare chena shewa ngam ane se yi yen la rank ડુંગ દેખભાળ સેવા ધંડી શિબિર નામિતે તા નામિતે 
na mida ni tare nya wa ida tu lul mi ni te le jama te de sumbres and as far as uh, the bad health is concerned you know it is a remnant of uh, the previous bad karmas you know in the past lives you know one caused a lot of uh, health issues to other people one beat the others or the harm others in many ways and as a result of those negative karmas those karmas ripened you know in the as uh, in the form of rebirths in a bad migrations but once we got out of that the remnants of the karmas are left and which bring this kind of a power um, this kind of a bad health or the i should say um poor health uh, in this lifetime kaje ene super really sene ka karina ten deba kaje yese ki sene ane sering bo mea se tun dun je ane ba shenu ke tregu do was some people are very lucky to be born rich or born in rich families but unfortunately they don't live that long the life is short for them the kare shebe sana sepe se tuns me shewa ngama la sinji ji so ke bin namiti ani se del rang ani me se tundu ji chabre be ten zambota dire ge ko lo se pe zo shu ni ko la sa ke go ya kare se So as a result of generosity, so one was able to be reborn in a rich family, uh, but as a result of uh, you know uh, shortening the lives of other beings in previous lives, or killing them, or cutting short their lifespan. So in this life, one experiences a short life. Uh, So as I said before one could be very rich in this life but one could have a terrible health and it's almost like one has a chronic disease and uh, so basically couldn't enjoy one's own resources so this kind of situation uh, is due to different kinds of karma that one has accumulated good karma generosity led to resources and abusing other sentient beings the abuse i use the term in a very broad sense beating others or you know how just hurting others or you know killing them and all of these abuses so abusing other sentient beings in the past lives has resulted in uh you know poor health uh for example uh, in this life and that the nigger said that that le zangini to tik yiki tol rich mia ji yeder rich so the point i'm trying to make here is like you know how we could create both good and karmas and they both could ripen in one lifetime so something good about life due to the good karma and something bad about life due to the bad karma So all basically all the miseries and the bad things and the problems uh, kicking in our life are due to we say negative karmas that we are making so much effort we are very sincere in working hard to earn our living but yet we don't have success we basically live in a poverty So which means so we were not generous you know in our past uh, and uh, we were very miserly about our resources so as a result it doesn't matter how much efforts we make in this life we stay poor so on how many years the and the rank and pay never join the better toreta as him that been the listen kubata and it was mark when they pay to hit on that they share in the zoo ne So poverty could come from a number of negative negativities not just one right being miserly about things of course is a main cause of poverty or like damaging others property or stealing things from others or hurting others in you know, property all of these bad karmas could result in a uh, poor uh, uh, living and conditions So what I'm talking about is how karmas are you know responsible for our 
good and bad uh, life situations and experiences. So my underneath all of these things, what I <coughs> want to convey to you is that if you really want all the good things happen to us uh, uh, in, la in here and hereafter, then we really need to create positive actions. And uh, so that means, you know, we need spirituality or dharma, because dharma teaches us to do the positive thing, not the negative things. And then if we are really getting fed up with uh, the, the difficulties and problems and the miseries in our life, then we better take a lesson from that, that we should not create negativities, because negativities will bring, I mean, there's no doubt about it, negativities do bring negative outcomes to the results. So if you don't want uh, difficulties and problems in life, we are really getting fed up, you know, uh, up to our neck, then we learn to stop creating negativities. <laughs> So basically, uh, you know, participating in dharma, spiritually, or cultivating dharma, or practicing it, whatever you want to call it, what it really involves is that we uh, stop creating uh, negativities or generating delusions. Now, all of these are the real causes of suffering, what we don't want. And, uh, you know, cultivate the positive states of mind and create positive karmas because these are the causes of uh, all the goodness and happiness we are seeing. So dharma in a very simple term means, I mean, do the positive things and have the positive things and don't do the negative things if you don't want the negative things. Yeah. So when we really talk about finding the kind of peace and happiness and the goodness we are really seeking, it could only come from, you know, transforming our mind through spirituality or dharma. I mean, we cannot get the kind of happiness, peace, and the goodness we are seeking uh, through, um, uh, you know, uh, through... Uh, you know, power and influence, or through material resources. Yes, they do bring certain comforts and, say, you know, change our situation here and there a little bit. But in ultimate sense, these are not the real causes of uh, happiness and peace. Of course, we can't achieve what we want through the weapons of mass destruction, you know. Uh, so when it comes to transforming our mind through spirituality or dharma, the responsibility lies in oneself. It does not matter, uh, you know, uh, how old we are. We could be, you know, young or very young, middle age, you know, old or real, real old. But we all need to cultivate spirituality, and that is our personal responsibility. Mm. Because the reason is very simple and straightforward. It doesn't matter, regardless of our age differences, we all want to be happy, we don't want unhappiness. See, if that is what we all agree or really aspire for, then Dharma is the source of happiness and it is uh, the solution to enter. Uh, Suffering. Uh, so, such are the reasons, you know, why uh, spirituality is so important to us and why we need to cultivate or practice uh, uh, spirituality. Uh, 
When we talk about practicing dharma or spirituality, of course, first we have to educate ourselves in spirituality. We have to know what we are going to practice, right? So once we have the knowledge about what we are going to practice, then we got to practice it, means cultivate it. We cannot practice dharma in the sense of putting on a jewelry. Dharma is not a jewelry to put on from the outside and look you know, cool and beautiful. It is something we need to cultivate within ourselves. When it comes to cultivating dharma or practicing dharma, it has all to do with affecting our state of mind. You know, transforming our state of mind for better. That is what practice means. That is what cultivation means. Dharma is not something to be talked about or to become a big mouth or to give a lecture or presentations. It is not an ornament to put on and look beautiful and you know, attractive. It is something we need to, uh, how should I say, cultivate within our mind and transform our mind into positive and better state of mind. So mm. So when we, you know, uh, understand that, you know, practicing dharma means uh, training our mind, transforming our mind. When our mind is transformed, disciplined, trained in that sense, of course our mind is really thinking positively. So how could we really do anything that hurts others when we are thinking positively? Mm. So if we stop harming others, that means we are, you know, we have stopped creating negativities. And thinking positively does not simply mean stopping harming others, but it also could lead us to benefit others, to work for others. So if we stop creating negativities, then we really don't have to worry about the negative outcomes, because that is in the law of nature. If we don't do negative things, you know, you will never experience negative uh, outcomes. Uh, so if we stop creating negativities, we will never have to worry about uh, suffering experiences, because without negativities, there won't be suffering. Okay. So as we know what practicing dharma means, it means affecting our state of mind, transforming our attitudes and transforming our mind, then in the process of doing that, we stop harming others and we start to benefit others wherever we can. And, and, and also we started to see that, while well, we have stockpiled a lot of negativities from many past lifetimes, okay? We are very rich in that sense. So now we really need to reduce that stockpile. We need to purify our mind of all the negativities we did before. While we are not going to do it anymore, but we all, whatever we did is still stockpiled in our mind, and we need to clean up, do the cleaning. Uh, so when our really mind is, uh, you know, affected in a positive sense, then I think, relatively speaking, of course, you know, we will face uh, less difficulties uh, in uh, abandoning negativities or purifying negativities, and uh, we will uh, be able to easier for us uh, to do the positive things. So when we are truly inspired and we really said, okay, this is what I got to do. I need to, uh, how should I say, it, uh, bring inner transformation, positive transformations within myself. And this is what is so amazing, inspiring. When we get the inspiration, then I don't think we are going to procrastinate, you know, our practice. You know, we are not going to push our practice into l later time. You know, we are going to do now. 
Do it now. That ten days are no call, Matuna, and eh, one turn of your cast down your day. And eh, church, do you imagine Nekus, a lonely chin sons, Mansamachin, Mahibachin? So when we really don't uh, have that sense of, uh, I mean, they don't have that inspiration, that appreciation of the Dharma, changing our state of mind, uh, and that sense of urgency, I need to do it now, if we keep on procrastinating, you know, if we get kind of locked into that pro procrastination process, if you will, well then, what the great Tibetan master, Jeb Gundang Rinpoche said, you know, could come true. And he said, just kind of looking at one life, right, if somebody's going to live about 60 years, he said, well, for the first 20 years, I even didn't care about Dharma. Okay, I have no clue, I'm a clueless guy, and the 20 years went by. Okay. So one could be thinking that, okay, I'm still very young, and I'm kind of a teenager, and I'm kind of a young and agile, and so, I mean, there's a lot of time later on, so I'm just going to kind of hang out. And so the 20 years goes by before we realize, you know, the hangout time is not that long, actually. And then the next 20 years, you said, you know what, oh my gosh, I, you know, I, I could have practiced, you know what, I, I, I need to practice. You know, I need to change my way of thinking positively. But I need to do that. I need to do that, and next 20 years goes by. So it's kind of nice, like, to tell, you know, I really need to do it now. I need to change it. You know, it's not too late. But keep on thinking, I need to do it, I need to do it, and next 20 years goes by, which really means that the laziness of procrastination is blessing us. Right. And then the remaining next 20 years, you say, you know what? Well, excuse me saying that, Gisela once said, shoot, 40 years gone by. Well, I have 20 more years, you know, and then you just kind of regret for having not been able to do it. Just you keep worrying about, you know, I should have practiced, you know, but, you know, what? So just keep on worrying for having not been able to practice in the next uh, 20 years. Uh, you know, go by. So that that Lord is that that Messi Tomboy Tonze Songwe Nantarians Lojins get And then the great master concludes. He said, you know, this is the you know uh, story of an empty life. Okay, first 20 years didn't care about Dharma, clueless. Next 20 years said, okay, I gotta do it. I gotta do it. Goes by. And the remaining 20 years, they just keep on regretting, oh, shoot, I should have practiced, you know, not kind of, you know, I can't, I have to do all these other things. So then the life ends, so this is the story of empty life. So our goal is not to fall in these parameters of the life story. We don't want this to be our life story, you know, we want to be outside. We want a different story about life, okay? Oh, uh, yeah. So the point I'm trying to make is it doesn't matter, you know, how old we are or not old we are, uh, you know, because we really got to kind of inspire ourselves and grab the opportunities, if you will, to do whatever practice we could because, uh, you know, in many ways the age difference is don't matter that much if the time goes that fast. See? So as I mentioned that, yes, it's very important for us to practice uh, spirituality, you know, but then, you know, we also need to educate ourselves about the spirituality that we're going to, uh, you know, practice. If you have no clue about spirituality, then just simply saying, I need to practice it, or I want to practice it, it doesn't really make much of a sense. It's just like, uh, you know, we are some kind of uh, locked ourselves up in the cyberspace with not much clue, and, you know, something's happening, but we really don't know what is happening, you know. Confused, so it is like, you know, we have no idea about our destination, but we just kind of want to go somewhere. We just want to go, you know, that's all we want, right? So we're really, I mean, uh, as Keshele used the word, we are just confused. I mean, we, 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 you know, we are never going to get anywhere. There's no destination. 
Such a Yaksaki and Rogan Rogue Summer, such as a Kaman Rogue Hamaguna Day, Rogan Rogue Summer, Kansas Jamu. Or maybe make it you know, this way that we really want to go to a very happy place. Hopefully, there's one. Right, that would be our destination. But we don't know where it is. Okay, so we just want to go to the happy place. Okay, so we really, as I said, we will never get there. So, because there is a certain part in our mind which is a confused state of mind. <laughs> so simply wanting to go to a happy place, not know where it is, you keep on going and kind of wandering everywhere. So we will end up, you know, nowhere actually. We just kind of, uh, I mean, uh, how should I say, get, uh, you know, detoured in everywhere and not getting to the place we want to be. <laughs> you don't know where to go. There's going on and on. <laughs> Somebody asks you, where are you going? So I'm going to be best place. Where is best place? <laughs> then no answer. <laughs> 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 so that time, we say that church do church and worship by Abushi. They do that they can see church church here the shower some of Pinchilla. Pembachir is. So the point I'm trying to make here is we really need to uh, learn about a spirituality that we are going to practice or cultivate. And when we talk about uh, chu, which is the Tibetan term, translation of the Sanskrit term dharma, and West English word probably everybody found is spirituality, unless there's another one you can give me later. Um, when The way we understand chu or the dharma spirituality is something that can affect our future lives. That's what we're talking about. We're not really so much concerned about this life, if you will, but we're really talking about, you know, how to affect future lives. So if we are really, uh, I should say, preoccupied with this life's interest, right? How can, how can I be rich? How can I have a higher position? How can I have a big name? And all of these things. So with such attitudes and interest and motivation or agenda, if we come into Dharma, even if what we really practice Dharma, it does not become spiritual practice. It does not become Dharma practice. So we could find authentic spirituality, but with our own, you know, uh, you know, own worldly uh, interest and agenda, that we might spoil the whole thing. That what we practice may not become our spiritual practice. So we really have to watch out our motivations and uh, hidden agendas, hidden meaning like worldly attitudes, worldly concerns, you know. And also, if somebody says, okay, I want to be some kind of a clairvoyant, you know, I want that extra sensory perception, so that, you know, oh, I want to see some kind of interesting colors, you know, in the cyberspace. Uh, oh, I want to be some kind of a visionary, you know, so that people don't see things, but I see some, you know, uh, rainbows in the uh, Netherlands. Well, with all those attitudes, if we come into Dharma, we are spoiling the Dharma. What we practice does not uh, become uh, spiritual practice. So if uh, we, um, you know, uh, study Lamrim, uh, treatises, Lamrim is a Tibetan term which means stages of the path, Treatises, uh, so we will learn a lot about with what kind of attitudes and motivations we should practice uh, spirituality. Even if the spirituality we practice is authentic, but with all our worldly concerns and uh, 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 in attitudes, you know, we may contaminate the practice and it won't become a practice in the first place. So once uh, a great, uh, uh, you know, Dromtaba, a lay person practitioner, Dromtaba Ubasaga, <coughs> Uh, was approached by someone and asked, you know, uh, could you advise me how to practice okay, spirit, Dharma? And uh, Domdama said, you got to give up worldly concerns. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Ani kuali thaya ta. Teli lak pe ani sanje gompa thaya che dong zo. Pe kunno te tang hua chi de che gurus. So the point I want to make here is that as we engage in spiritual practice, all of us, uh, you know, our motivation should be to be able to uh, get out of samsara. And more than that, to be able to become a Buddha for the sake of all sentient beings. Okay? And uh, don't get too much stuck with this lifetime. Uh, and uh, so if, uh, you know, we're too much stuck uh, with uh, the interests of this lifetime and then engage in Dharma, uh, our practice becomes questionable practice. Uh, that thing. So as I often do, uh, these are some of the things I thought are really um, very relevant and important to all of us, including myself. As I always say, when I speak to you, I'm also speaking to myself. You know, I'm not just telling you to do something that I am not required to do. I put myself in the audience, and I mean, as much as I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself that we all need to... Uh, you know, uh, practice uh, uh, properly. So with that, uh, I want to return to where we left off uh, in this wonderful text called uh, A Miscellaneous Collection of Kadamba Geshe's Personal Advisors. That's a long title to say, uh, but that is a wonderful text. <laughs> So this is a kind of a treasure, uh, you know, text in the sense that there have been many great realized Kandaba Geshe's, so many of them have been approached and, you know, so asked for advices and, you know, uh, asked for answers to different questions. So that's what we are going through. Okay. So now today we are going to uh, talk about uh, another great Kadamba Geshe by the name of Geshe Kamlungpa uh, has got to say. Tanjuri nye pa hidu kawis Tawa jay tan joba ju chanwe ane mi ilu te de Tawa kira kali kawo res kanam First, Geshe Kamlungpa wants us to understand that it is, you know, very difficult to find a precious human life that is characterized by eight freedoms and ten enriching factors, eight wonderful qualities. This kind of a human life is not easy to come by. Of course, here Geshe Kamlupa simply mentions this, uh, but uh, if you go back in the Lamrim uh, treatises, uh, such as Liberation in the Palm of Your Hand, which is available in English, or such as uh, the great Lamrims of Lama Tsongkhapa available in English, you go through those Lamrims, then we started to look from many different angles and perspectives to understand this. What does it mean that precious human life with freedoms and enriching factors is difficult to find. So we look in terms of the causes we need to create and accumulate. That's a tough one, okay? We need in terms, from an exemplary point of view also, we can understand how difficult it is to find uh, uh, such a life. So as I mentioned, a precious human life uh, is characterized by eight leisures or freedoms, in Tibetan, and ten uh, endowments or the enriching factors, hidden qualities, and there is your uh, home assignment. Go and figure it all out. So, but I'm just kind of pointing you uh, where to look for these things, right? You can either look in the liberation in the palm of your hand, Lamrim, by the great Tibetan master, Kyabchuk Pabunga Doji Shang, or you can look up in the great Lamrim of uh, Lama Tsongkhapa, and then there are other small versions of Lamrim there, uh, you can find them. <laughs> And uh, so when you look up in the right sections of the Lamrim, then that's where you will find about how it is difficult to find a precious human life with so many qualities from causal point of view, the kind of causes we need to create, 
and how it is difficult to find this kind of life from exemplary point of view, and so on. Not only that, a precious human life is very difficult to find, but once you find it, it is greatly meaningful. Otherwise, you know, Gisela wouldn't say it, who cares? Uh, that's my, you know, footnote there. Uh, but, you know, so, I mean, once you find it, it's greatly meaningful in the sense that uh, we, uh, you know, have the potentiality to do the greatest, uh, I mean, things, uh, you know, um, positive things. Uh, or uh, Lama Songoba sitting uh, above me here uh, said uh, in his uh, uh, abbreviated Lamrim called Lamrim Nyamgur, which means the experiential Lamrim or the um, uh, uh, the songs of uh, you know um, uh, Lamrim realizations. He said that the precious human life is, as a matter of fact, more precious than a wish fulfilling gem. So if we are lucky to get hold of uh, a wish fulfilling gem, uh, and uh, if we uh, cherish it and we pray to it, it is said that it can fulfill a lot of our uh, material wishes in this lifetime. You know, I want, uh, uh, you know, a lot of wealth. I want to be rich. Okay, the uh, wish fulfilling gem can certainly provide that. You know, so one will never. Uh, you know, run out of food, uh, you know, basic necessities of life, and as a matter of fact, one could get uh, almost any material goods that one wishes for. But what the wish fulfilling gem cannot do, or we cannot ask it to do, is that I don't want to be reborn in a bad migration's next life, so you kind of, you know, help me. The wish fulfilling gem has no power to do that. Okay? Well, I want to be Buddha for the sake of a sentient being. That's my goal. The wish fulfilling gem fails uh, to provide that wish. Uh, but when we say that uh, precious human life is much more precious than a wish fulfilling gem, what we're really talking about is that um, I mean this this kind of life has such a great potentiality that if we do, uh, how to say, if we are determined, and if we do dedicate ourselves to, uh, in the pursuit of enlightenment completely, it is very possible for us to become a Buddha in this very lifetime. Now that is an amazing achievement that one could have. Uh, so in other words, that uh, by making good use of a precious human life, we will be able to uh, gain any kind of spiritual realizations, uh, you know, one can possibly imagine, you know, of course, to, to be able to, uh, you know, achieve this kind of life again in the next life, um, that's very possible. Or to be able to uh, be reborn as a divine being, a celestial being, you know, that is very possible. But beyond those things, you know, th those are not m wonders, actually. One could also liberate oneself completely from samsara, which is called, one can become an arhat, or arhant in Pali. Or to, and beyond that, as I mentioned earlier, that one could become a fully enlightened being, you know, a Buddha. Yes. Yes. So, 
ตบเรสตะขะเรเชกุรเซวเอสเสดะจิรมาเจซังขะเรเชกุรเซนะซุจิมิกเดเบกินซุงซุจิมเตซอซิมิกเดเบเปตะสขันดิกิเนะโกเ
ભોજનો પછી એ પહોંચતા અને લોતા રહેતા અને લોભા તાવ હતા લોતા ચાંદ મેજે સમય લોતા મેજે સમય અને દોષી અને સૌના તાંબા ચા માજે કાગો હતા And then there are the three negativities of the mind, narsim, covetousness, coveting for others' good, like how nice if I get that one, you know, uh, and the harmful intent, you know, uh, just wishing, uh, you know, uh, bad things happen to other people or hurting others you know, mentally, you know, uh, sending all the bad things you know, mentally to others. Uh, and lokta, which is the wrong view or distorted views. So these are the three negativities of the mind. When we commit ourselves not to indulge in them, that is the ethics which prevents us from uh, such negativities. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that 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 I'm saying You know, we may have taken what is called lay person's uh, ethics or vows. Okay, upasaka or upasika vows in Sanskrit. So there are actually five of them. So we may have decided to take all five. We may have taken, you know, four of the five, three of the five, two of the five, but one of the five, and there's no excuse to that. Uh, otherwise, you have no vows. You know, you don't take one. So it will be zero vows. So, uh, so whatever, uh, you know, uh, lay person's ethics we have committed ourselves to, So again, we have to observe that uh, you know, intact. So then even as a lay practitioner, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, uh, you know, maybe you have taken the Bodhisattva ethics on top of that. Maybe on, you have taken the Tantric ethics, the highest level ethics. So even as a lay practitioner, one could have taken so many levels of ethics that one has to keep them Uh, you know, intact. Yeah. Right. So if we observe our ethics and protect it just as we would protect our eyes, then it is like all the causes of the good things are in the palm of your hand or my hand. Okay? So you want a good rebirth, there is one. It's just sitting in the palm of your hand. Yeah, all other good things. Uh, that's because the great Indian master, Acharya Chantakirti, uh, said, and Kesala quoted the lines from his memory, that in order to find uh, fortunate rebirths, or the good rebirths, there is no other cause other than observing pure ethics. No, no, that should be, that's what should be making the, making the big the sooner, rather than Kisan Chambarag Dua. So then if we protect our ethics just as we would protect our eyes, I think that's great benefits that come to us. Like the me, Kumbato, the Nekha, Kuin Rebut, Sarim, Matu, Tadu, Sanjay Kumbato, we are about to do sooner. So when we talk about how observing ethics could lead to good rebirths as human being or as a divine being, well, still these are the temporary outcomes we are talking about. I mean, those are not our real goals, you know. Our real goal is by observing pure ethics that we can get out of samsara, that we can become Buddha. All right. That's the end of the question. That's the end of the question. I don't know how many people are going to be able to do this. ชื่อเชื่อเรื่องเบกเรื่องสมัยตาเรามาเรียนสอนท่านเรามาเรียนสอนท่านเรามาเรียนสอนท่านเรามาเรียนสอนท่านเรามาเรียนสอนท่านเ
Uh, and um, so while we have this, uh, you know, illusory body, uh, we should try to uh, engage in actions physically, verbally, and mentally, which accord with the principles of Dharma. Basically means try to do the positive things, physically, verbally, and mentally. Mm. This body we have, we often talk about uh, physical and mental aggregates, sagandhas, right? That's what you heard about. So we all have uh, five sagandhas or aggregates, physical and mental aggregates. But this body which we have is just like a magical creation. You know, if we are going to watch a magician play his, his or her, you know, tricks, you know, uh, so our body is really like that, you know, as transient as a magical creation. I see Chinese again, I'm conventionally thinking, or we think that, okay, those who are young, of course, they have, they, I mean, they are expected to live much longer, right? Those who are much older, they should, uh, you know, live sooner. Uh, but that's our conventional thinking. But we really don't know, you know, who will go first. Hmm. So the lesson that we need to learn from what Geshe Kalamba says is our life is very transient and ephemeral, regardless of our age. Okay? Of course, conventionally we would like to think that uh, you know, the younger you are, the more time you, you know, you're expected to have. And uh, if you have already lived you know, long enough, uh, maybe uh, pretty soon uh, you will uh, face out. Uh, but we don't know who will face out first. And uh, so because, uh, you know, uh, the, I, mean, we, I mean, we observe so many things happening to young people, right, at the prime of their youth. As Ge you heard Geshe-la use some of the English words, party, and, uh, and the young people. Okay, they're very young, very beautiful, very sexy, attractive, and uh, they kind of, you know, carpool and hit the road to go to the party, and they, they imagine all kinds of things happening, right? I'm going to go to the party, and I'm have to have a just fabulous time with my friends, hanging out, meeting, and dancing, you know, throughout the night, and all these things, but on the way, there is a terrible accident, and before you get to the party, your life is snapped, okay? So what does that mean? That means despite all your imaginations and what you want and everything, they are so young and beautiful and everything, you did not have control over your life, and your life snapped right there, okay? So that tells us, about the illusory nature of our life. So, um, I mean, as a spiritual practitioner, it's very important for us to really, I mean, realize that fact of our life. You know, because there is no certainty when we are going to die. The time of death is uncertain. I mean, nobody can fix it, nobody has ever fixed it, and nobody can ever will, you know. So it is so uncertain and unpredictable that it can happen any time, this very moment. Now, we are not just trying to scare people here, you know, oh, like, this is going to happen, so, you know, uh, just uh, trying to scare people. This is not a scare tactic. I mean, this is, we are talking about the fact of the life. The whole purpose of really thinking about the impermanence of life, the transitoriness of life, is so that, you know, we become a really, little more realistic about life. You see, life could snap any time, and so while we have time now, we try to create more positive actions and to do our practice. And that's the whole purpose, you know, not because we have nothing better to do and scaring ourselves, you know. Uh, or uh, kind of, uh, how do you say, put ourselves in depression. Geshe didn't say that just to make my point, a translator's point. So, I mean, the whole purpose of uh, thinking about impermanence of life 
is how can we make best use of the opportunities right here now that I have. No, no, this is Lunga de Chula and you make this. Then the Jiji Gawa Tanji, Lunga Tinbe, Singi turned to Mulan Jackson for tops. Gawa Kandija Sapa Yina. And then Mulan de Mulan Gijin Simba to Google this. Sapa the Jiji Gawa Sata Gawa Saki to the Yina Gawa Saki Yina. And then Mulan get one key and and the next Geshe Kamrupa wants us to tell us that we better dedicate our positive actions altruistically. Because after all, the kind of positive actions that we accumulate are also impermanent. Okay, they could be destroyed. You know. So before I mean anything like that happened, we should altruistically dedicate our positive energy for the benefit of other sentient beings. Well, that is good and this one. That Kangayas, Kangayas, Matas, Kandichi in the Esta, Pegu Kandichi in the Enda, and the Tashitan is again Duji, Dujita, and Dumashi should summon the Juman and each other. Kayam Mata, Juma in Pace, Tila and Dember Manzimper, Chamber Tones. And the next Geshe Kamrupa wants to tell us that whatever exists, both permanent and impermanent phenomena, in an ultimate sense, they are just like a magic or magical creation, and nothing exists in and of itself. Nothing is objectively existent or independently. So therefore, we should not grasp at the true existence of things, which is not there in the first place. Okay, and um, so which basically means do not get attached to things. You know, and the example is if we are watching a magic show, and a beautiful person is created, right, and given to you as your friend or partner, it would be too silly to get attached to this magical person because it's not going to last anyway long. There's no substance to it, you see. So it's the same thing in the ultimate sense. There is no inherent substance or existence to all things that exist. So it's better to let go our attachment to them. Don't get stuck uh, to them through attachment. Mm. Mm. Of course, I want to clarify that, you know, when we say that phenomena are to be seen like a magical creation, but in all respects, the magical creation and what we are talking about are not the same thing. Okay, magical creation, it is just an illusion created for a while, but it does not perform any function, right? If you're going to drink a magical water, it's not going to, you know, quench your thirst, in other words, okay? It's just a footnote, okay? But on the other hand, conventional phenomena do exist, and they do function. They do serve purposes, okay? So in that respect, magic and uh, the conventional reality is not one and the same thing. But the point that we are trying to make is, when we look at how things actually exist, not at the surface level, how do they really exist? You know, then what we will see is that they are really like a magical creation. They are created out of causes and conditions. Nothing exists in it itself, and it's pretty much you know there is no inherent substance to things or phenomena. We are just kind of a fabricating stuff and kind of throwing onto the phenomena and getting also stuck and attached with them. So don't do that. Jumad, Jumad can get any division with the talent to be seen. And that Jumad can get any talent to be seen. They can get any talent to be seen. They can get any talent to be seen. They can get any talent to be seen. And that 
So we could have uh, totally different perceptions with regard to the ultimate nature of things or phenomena. How do they actually exist? That is the, you know, the question, central question we ask. And so we could have different perceptions or understanding of that. And now just to go back to the example about the magic show, uh, there could be three different, uh, I mean, perceptions here too. Let's say, in the case of a magician, you know, who has created horses and elephants out of the tricks and pebbles, okay? For this person, the magician, there are appearances of elephants and horses. He sees, you know, elephants and horses that he created, but he knows that these are not real horses and elephants because I'm playing the magic here. Are you with me? That's one perception, right? So there are appearances of horses and elephants to his eyes or whatever, but he knows these are not the real thing. I'm just fooling people here. Okay. But then the people who are at the magic show, you know, who got kind of a influenced by his tricks or the, his incantations or whatever it is that he's doing, for these people, not only are there the appearances of horses and elephants, but they also kind of for a while believe, wow, real horses and elephants are here. You see that? So they cling to these appearances as being real horses and elephants, which is different for the magician himself. Are you with me so far? The after the me. magic show comes the people who are not part of magic. What do they see? They see the reality as it is. It is just the pebbles and the twigs. There are no horses and elephants, okay? Even the appearances or the clinging, it's just simply a handful of pebbles and the twigs there. That's the reality it is. Okay, so three different perceptions, right? So we could have the similar kind of a parallel perceptions with regard to how things actually exist. We call it ultimate nature of uh, phenomena. <laughs> So, I mean, there are, of course, a lot of things to talk about. These are some of the, you know, harder topics, you know, how, you know, we establish the existence of conventional reality and how do we establish the existence of ultimate reality. Okay, we are not going to go there today. That ring to her knees, then I'm so, I'm going to the church and she'll be given to all the Okay, I'll let you show you. Uh, I have a prayer request uh, for uh, David Wong, who has passed away. And then I have an announcement, quick, uh, especially people living nearby or in Pasadena. Uh, today from 11 to 5, uh, there is some kind of a Himalayan festival going around there at the Pacific Asia Museum in Pasadena. So if you're in the neighborhood or you have a lot of time, you want to go there. Uh, so there is Himalayan festival from 11 to 5. So there are, you know, Pakistanis and Nepalis and the Tibetans and I don't know who else, you know. So they are selling stuff and they are doing some performances. No. Uh, let us put all of our positive energies together and dedicate our collective uh, positive energy or merit for the flourishing of uh, Dharma, the source of benefits and happiness throughout the universe. 
May His Holiness the Dalai Lama and all other great holy beings, wherever they are in any part of the universe, live long and be successful in fulfilling their visions, benefiting sentient beings. May spiritual communities throughout the world and spiritual practitioners from all traditions remain healthy, harmonious, and be successful in fulfilling their spiritual aspirations. May these and other world environments be free of all kinds of unwanted pains and problems, and beings find peace, happiness, prosperity, and spirituality. <laughs> Last but not least, we dedicate our collective uh, merit, punya, uh, for all kind mother sentient beings to be free from the fears and dangers of two types of mental obscuration, and may we all become Buddhas soon. <laughs> Sanjay, 